Rich with bids, the art of bidding property preservation made easy. Did you just start your brand new property preservation company and do you want to turn this into this? Well, stay tuned. I know what some of you are thinking. What the heck is property preservation? Um, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown um, just for people that have no idea. And this is your first time um, tuning in. That way you can have a little bit of a backstory um, really quickly. Um, property preservation is basically the process of caring um, for the inside or outside um, of foreclosed property, um, whether it's vacant or occupied. Um, basically, property preservation businesses work with banks. Um, asset management companies to provide services such as repairs, um, inspections, insurance claim management, um, and maintenance. Um, we do a lot of trash out. So overall handyman, contractor, whatever. Now that we all know what um, a property preservation company is, um, I wanted to kind of get into a topic again that is um, really important, um, which is bidding. Um, bidding is gonna be one of the most important parts of your business because this is what's going to separate you from either being very successful or being a failure um, and just to be very open and frank i have had a lot of ups and downs when it comes to learning how to effectively bid um, per se um, you know you underbid um, obviously you don't make enough money if you overbid um, you won't get the job so it's a double-edged sword and it's taken me a long time to master this art um, but just to give you some perspective um, on foreclosures and the amount of work that's out there, um, just based on a statistic from the Mortgage Bankers Association, a quarter million properties will go into foreclosure. Um, some of you may find this statistic to be pretty alarming. Um, you know, and I'm not saying it to make anyone feel sad, but unfortunately, it's a sad truth. As long as there has been the mortgage, there has been a foreclosure. And um, the more foreclosures that they are, the more that our business strives. So um, with that being said, so there are three things that I've come up with that I've been able to break bids down into that I feel that if you consistently do these things, you will find that you will have a much better return and much more um, greater approval rate when it comes to your bid. Um, I like to call it app for short, A-P-P, -P, amount, proof, price. The first thing that we all need to understand is amount, the amount of debris or to be trashed out. And um, the most easiest way that I've come up with, scientific proven method, um, I think Aristotle thought of this, probably not, um, is to understand what a cubic yard is. Now, one cubic yard is equivalent to the size of a top-loading washing machine. Um, this is very important because this is typically the basis of measure that majority of all asset managers and all banks will use to determine how much debris is going to need to be hauled off. So your ability to eyeball how much cubic yards of debris you have is going to be so important. So don't overthink this very simply. One cubic yard is the size of a top loading washing machine. Okay, you have to nail this because um, the amount of debris is gonna determine how much the bank's gonna be willing to pay for the amount of theft out there. So you have to hit the nail on the head with this. You have to have a good understanding of how much one cubic yard is equivalent to. Okay, and that's gonna be the foundation of how you create your bids. Proof. Um, if you have any aspirations of getting your bid approved, you're going to have to provide some type of proof. Um, majority of your clients are going to be in a different state or in a completely different location from where you're working. So your ability to provide good and accurate photos is going to be so important. Okay, so take lots of photos. Um, and also just a quick warning. Um, again, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and Taking photos is my favorite part because this is where you get an opportunity to wow your client. Um, you're able to paint a full picture of the property without them being there. So, um, you know, whether or not if the debris is just regular household goods or maybe it's paint, uh, maybe it's something, something hazardous, um, animal feces, dead animals. I've seen all types of crazy things. 
So I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you, just be prepared for anything. Make sure that when you take your photos, you paint a full picture of what's going on so that there is no doubt about the condition of that asset, if that makes sense. Again, don't overthink this. You wanna paint a clear picture with your photos. Photos to paint a picture. Is that right? No. Photos to paint a picture. Got it? Propertypreservation.us states, as soon as you arrive on property, start taking photos. You're going to need to document everything for the purposes of your estimation and to provide later evidence of your work you have completed. All right, Very the last subject, pricing. Um, quick story, um, I once did a job in my earlier days for a newer client. I went out to the job site and there was about maybe 20 cubic yards of debris there and I got an, a thumbs up over the phone um, to go ahead and haul the debris out. Um, long story short, I ended up um, not being paid in full for that job. Um, rookie mistake and I'll never do it again and I'm gonna tell you, make sure you always know how much you're gonna get paid for a job before you do it. Um, I'm old school so I like to see things in black and white um, written on a paper, bid approval. Um, so one thing I could tell you, make sure you do your due diligence when it comes to um, knowing how you're paid and who is paying you, okay? Um, so as far as pricing goes, pricing can vary from state to state, county to county, and company to company. So be familiar with your local area's pricing. If the comp client that you're working for has a price sheet, use that to your advantage. Use that to help build your pricing. Um, as your bids don't get approved, you'll probably get a lot better, I promise you, because I know that I did. So following these three easy steps will put you on the fast track to seeing more bid approvals. So make sure you're ready for a quick turnaround times and usually um, due dates of about a few days um, across the industry. Um, this is relatively common. However, always check the due date that is written on the work order. Um, finding that sweet spot requires you to follow the APP strategy to get the work orders completed on time, okay? Get the work orders completed on time or you won't get any more approvals because you have a bad report. So make sure you get your jobs done on time, okay guys?